there's a reason lawns are called ecological deserts. We're not going to find much like here. Lawns in the U.S. are estimated to cover over 31.6 million acres of land. That rivals the amount of land we're using to grow wheat. That's enough land to cover the state of Pennsylvania. But there are so many wonderful things to gain if we trade back some of this old lawn for garden space. And if you have an HOA, stick with me. I have some promising news. Like many people, my back garden began as mostly lawn, and I'm reducing my own lawn by carving out new garden beds. The lawn will now act as the hallways that draw you around to different garden rooms. One very important thing I'm hoping to gain is more pollinators. In 2019, bees were declared the most important species on Earth. Kind of humbling. Without bees, most of the world's plants would go unpollinated, which would cause a devastating and far-reaching ripple effect. But bees are already in trouble. Some regions of China have lost so many pollinators that farmers there are paying people to hand pollinate at least 20 different crops. Here in the U.S., 37% of our bee species are facing extinction. But it doesn't have to be this way. Even small urban spaces can be packed with biodiversity if they're planned and managed well. Unlike honeybees, most bees are not social. And 70% of bee species actually nest underground, burrowing tunnels 6 inches to over 36 inches underground. To build their nurseries, mama bees need direct access to your soil. And ground nesting bees won't hurt you at all. They're not aggressive and don't defend their nesting sites. Converting some lawn to garden beds and using a light mulch like leaf litter that the bees can get through provides a perfect nesting site. Hardwood mulch can be great to get a new garden bed started, but it usually forms a very tight matrix that's extremely hard for even water to penetrate. So once your bed is started, consider switching to leaf litter or another loose material. And adding nectar and pollen-rich plants in your new garden bed will help suppress weeds, sometimes even better than mulch and it'll help your mama bees pack those little nurseries full. Adding garden beds under existing trees is an awesome way to get started with reducing your lawn. These spaces are perfect to fold in early blooming spring ephemerals that can feed the bees that emerge very early in the spring. Many woodland flowers are accustomed to blooming early before the trees leaf out and shade the understory. In my region in Maryland, having some native flowering plants that bloom in April is a great target. It's only just April 1st here, and I've already seen a few queen bees emerging. These understory gardens can also act as what's called soft landings, which are crucial for many butterfly and moth caterpillars to survive. And that will mean more butterflies for your eyeballs. When a butterfly or moth lays their eggs on the leaves of a tree, their very hungry caterpillars will hatch and then eat the leaves till they're content. And then most of the time, the caterpillars will actually drop to the ground to pupate, often burrowing down into leaf litter or even into the ground. So having a soft landing under your tree can actually help more butterfly caterpillars survive until adulthood. Many of us are accustomed to seeing large lawn with just a few relatively small garden beds, but try to match the size of your beds under trees to the tree's crown size. This means for a smaller tree, you can actually start with a smaller garden bed and then grow it with time as the tree grows. Giving up some lawn will also help you to grow more lightning bugs. One of the best things you can do for your fireflies is to reduce your lawn and give them more safe hiding spaces away from mower blades. In just the last 50 years, insect populations have declined by 75%. If you let that sink in, it's a pretty staggering figure. Many of us have even personally noticed a decrease in the number of insects and fireflies just in our own lifetimes. And studies show that the more manicured your lawn is, the more you spray it, the more you mow it, the fewer insects you'll see, both in insect abundance and species diversity. And for heavily manicured lawns, we especially lose winged insects, like our fireflies. Just like so many bee species, fireflies also need access to bare soil. And firefly larvae need decaying matter like sticks, logs, and leaves. So naturalizing your garden beds under trees to include more decaying matter and leaving the leaves are great ways to save money on mulch and help fireflies to rebound. Which brings me to my next one. Ditching some lawn in favor of native plants will vastly improve your soil, and it will also help to improve air and water quality. Constant lawn mowing actually acts to compact your soil, which prevents water from absorbing in. And lawns have shallow roots, so they're not helpful for things like aeration, water retention, or carbon sequestration. And on top of that, mowing generally acts as a source of carbon emissions. Short turf grass also doesn't help to keep your soil cool or to retain moisture. So none of this is conducive to a healthy soil microbiome or a healthy environment in general. But the roots of many of our native plants run far deeper than turf lawn. These roots can help to gently break up and aerate your soil and let water absorb into the ground, even helping to filter your groundwater. And the plants will also help to shade and retain moisture in your soil. And the roots can also help to enrich your soil by drawing nutrients that are buried deep in the earth up into the plant matter, 
which then dies back down to enrich your topsoil. Now, if you're in an HOA, you might be feeling like you don't have the freedom to choose what to do with your lawn, but I think this will give you hope. In April of 2021, the Maryland Senate unanimously passed House Bill 322, which requires that HOAs and other organizations must allow low-impact landscaping. This includes things like rain gardens, native plant gardens, pollinator gardens, and xeriscaping. And the law specifically forbids HOAs from requiring that cultivated vegetation in gardens consist in whole or in part of turf grass. The bill was actually spearheaded by a Maryland homeowner who was fighting to preserve her own pollinator garden after her HOA used $100,000 of their own funds to hire a law firm, trying to force her to convert her pollinator garden back to turf grass. Turns out that was not money well spent. She won the case, and as a result, Maryland now gives legal protection for all of its residents to plant ecological gardens. And maybe this can even serve as legal precedents that other states can use to advocate for the same protection. Likely a major goal of your HOA board is to preserve and increase property values, but they may simply not be informed about the impact of landscaping decisions on the health of the ecosystems and ultimately their own health. Attending board meetings and helping to share the importance and beauty of native plants and the positive economic value of making space for nature in our neighborhoods can be a great way to start bridging any divides and making real positive change. And speaking of making space for nature, I found a surprising benefit to ditching some of my lawn has been more free plants. Making more garden spaces that don't get mowed lets Mother Nature participate in her own healing. I'm talking about weeds or volunteers. Unmowed garden beds give a landing space for nature to do some gardening of her own, which is like her very favorite thing. We'll need to keep an eye out for invasive species, but some of those weeds you'll find popping up in your new garden beds are actually wonderful and very important native plants that actually belong in your ecosystem. And you can't beat the price. Watch this video next to see how I'm working with my weeds.